Hello and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. Breaking news, Andre Estazen has officially been banned for four matches, which will be reduced to three should he complete the World Rugby Tackle Intervention uh, Program, um, which I'm named to be, um, he will do. And uh, after the red card against Portugal for his tackle um, on Jonah Lima, which left the Portuguese outside centre unconscious and leaving on a um, stretcher. Um, however, because of the Curry Cup, this ban is actually not going to be that hectic for him. And in fact, he could actually be available for as soon as the second test against Australia. So in um, actual practice, we'll basically miss one Springbok game and then we'll be available. So we wait to see if he will then attempt to be added to the Springbok squad. Probably not for the Australian leg, but we do expect to see him probably join a wider squad ahead of New Zealand and particularly ahead of Argentina. Before we get into uh, the ban itself and some of the other news, please do smash like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Right, so Andre Estesen received a red card um, that tackle against uh, Andre de Lima um, this weekend. And uh, it's been a very big debate across Twitter and across various social media about the validity of the red card. Um, the player himself um, appeared in front of an independent disciplinary committee yesterday, which was chaired by Matthew Weaver. Uh, from England and joined by former player uh, Jamie Corsi from Wales and former international referee Valerie Toma from Romania. Um, the player accepted that foul play had occurred and that the offence warranted a red card. So for all those saying that it didn't deserve to be a red card, well, Andrea Taylor said it did. Now, yes, obviously, you kind of always go into, I suppose, a certain amount of, you kind of have to accept that your best chance of getting away with it or getting away um, away with a, a, a shorter ban is to kind of plead guilty because that is part of the mitigating factor and that's part of, in terms of bringing the ban down. Um, so he did accept that foul play had occurred, did not, did not challenge the decision at all. And uh, the committee then decided that the entry point for the offence um, was that it should be the mandatory mid-entry point, um, which is six matches. Um, that is for any incident involving head contact. However, with the mitigating factors, the player accepting remorse, for example, um, and accepting it, et cetera, et cetera. The committee decided not um, to award the full 50% mitigation, um, but uh, resulted in a sanction of four matches. Um, however, it's made interesting that an additional match can be removed from the sanction if the player completes the World Rugby Coaching Intervention um, for sanction mitigation, um, CISM, all these sort of uh, acronyms and stuff like that in World Rugby, uh, which applies to any sort of tackle involving head contact. Uh, this is the interesting thing. Because the Curry Cup is currently going on at the moment and because he is signed for the Sharks and has actually even played in the Curry Cup, so I suppose it is a little bit more um, relevant than what, for example, we've seen with New Zealand players and like players missing, you know, Mitre Cup matches despite them being zero chance they were ever going to play in that in that tournament. A bit like Andre said, he wouldn't have been playing Curry Cup this weekend. Maybe he would. Maybe he could have played next weekend, but um, almost unlikely. Um, but uh, he, he's therefore um, suspended for the following matches, which is Sharks versus the Lions this weekend, uh, Humans versus Sharks on the 3rd of August, Sharks versus Greekers or South Africa versus um, Australia on the 11th of August, and Cheetahs versus Sharks on the 17th of August, uh, which is the same day as Australia versus South Africa as well. However, that is the one that can fall away should he complete the CISM, which I have no doubt he will do. Uh, he's also got 48 hours to appeal um, from the receipt of the full written decision, um, which I'd be very surprised if he does, because I don't think, if you're going to be perfectly honest, he was probably going to play against Australia. Um, and if they want to, for example, they could still take him over and play him against uh, in the second test. So in the end, not much of a punishment, to be honest. He's kind of gotten away with it because of the timing, the unique timing of it. I think if this was ahead of the Argentina games, for example, I think it would have been very frustrating, because I think that's when they will probably plan to try and play him. But um, in my opinion, I think David Delendi plays the first four rugby championship games and then we'll probably look to rotate against Argentina. Would be my guess. Um, the main thing I think is that it kind of puts to bed hopefully the entire issue. I said it um, I said it during the week that I think it was a red card. From the letter of the law, it is the red card. It was a really physical tackle. He got it wrong. Um, there was no mitigation. He was up by the tackle. There was no drop in height from the other player. There was definitely head contact. I don't see uh, the people that are sitting there saying there was no head contact. I don't know if you just don't want to see it, there wasn't head contact, but you can see the stills, you can see the images and the videos, and there was definitely head contact. I think he even knew afterwards that he was in trouble um, uh, from his reaction just after the tackle. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. He got it wrong, he's going to get punished for it, he'll serve his punishment, and he'll be back in the Springbok set, hopefully, um, very, very soon. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Fair, harsh, 
uh, too lenient, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve, and I'll chat to you soon.